Well, hello and welcome to episode 34 of Off The Leash, brought to you by The Racing Post in association with Premier Greyhound Racing. What a time to be alive. Four Cat 1s in full swing now in the sport of Greyhound Racing, as ever. We're in good company as well. Tony Bullen joins us, Open Race Correspondent for The Racing Post and a busy boy at the moment, Tony. Yeah, indeed. I mean, the, the Bengals had the song Manic Monday. It's Manic Weekend. I mean, it is good racing, though, so we can't complain, Dave. No, listen, you'll never hear me complaining. You know, this top class action wall to wall, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Remember, you are, of course, here on the Racing Post YouTube channel. Like, comment and subscribe. Let us know if you fancy, if you plan our anti-post, whatever you're doing, it, drop it in the comments below. Right, what is ahead then? So we've got the champion stakes at the semi-final stage on Friday night at Romford. Uh, we're at the quarter-final stage of the Oaks, sponsored by Premier Greyhound Racing, which we'll pick up next week because there's just not enough hours in the day. Uh, also on Saturday night is the Kent Derby, £20,000 at the semi-final stage there. And we're at the semi-final stage of the Bresbet Steel City Cup at Sheffield. That's on Sunday. Those three competitions that we are going to look at We'll take a little peek back at the heats last week and then we'll look at all three semi-finals of each competition. So it is a hectic one. We're going to go fast pace, but as Tony mentioned, the action is phenomenal. We're going to go straight to Sheffield on Sunday then and the two big guns in the anti-post market, they shone brightest on Sunday as well in the first round heats. Up first, Lynx Maverick, 28.90, winning heat four, out of track three. Silver Hill Ben was in track five. Seaview Sydney was your other qualifier here, back in third. This is a dog, Tony. I'm quite happy to hold my hands up and say, look, I'd probably written this dog off. What he showed me at Perry Bar when he didn't clear at the turn, I think it was in the, the first round of the, the Birmingham Cup. I thought, you know, like the powers are waning, but then he came back, didn't he? That match race, he was brilliant, and he was brilliant here. Yeah, I think the jury was still deliberating following his exit from the derby at Toaster. He'd sort of not produced his best form under race conditions, but he'd been putting up times in trials and obviously enjoyed that confidence boost in winning that match race at Romford where he posted a very quick time. He's all about the early pace and he just appears to have found the trapping. He's, he's, he's timed the start to perfection. He's come away really running and that makes all the difference with Lynx Maverick. Oh, he's getting... He's not getting any younger, but he's not getting any slower. And he's shown that with a sub-29 second run here. Yeah, 28.90. Really, really good. Put down a marker. But then we got to heat six and Wiki Ned, the Jim Crack winner, chasing that bonus. Bresbet put up the bonus, didn't they? £10,000. If you Whoever wins the Jim Crack, if they come back later in the year and have a go at the Steel City Cup and win that, will chuck in 10 bags on top. So Wiki Ned is chasing that. This competition is worth £11,500 to the winner anyway. And again, Tony, this was brilliant, wasn't it? In track three, 28.49 the winning time here. Absolutely brilliant. Swift Silly in one, Cine Hall Tester in six, but from a long way out, they were playing for second. Yeah, I mean, he, he, this was his first competitive start following that victory in a northern flat of Newcastle. Now, I, I had him, he was way below his best when he won that event. He sort of scrambled home for me, but clearly... That spell on the sidelines, as I and out anything that was going on at Newcastle, because he was ready to rock and roll. I mean, and what a time he put up! I mean, he was absolutely foot perfect. You've got to take into account this was a this was a bit of a minefield this race because there was early pace all over the place, but Wiki Ned just blew him away from start to finish. Twenty eight forty nine, unbelievable run. Yeah, I mean, let's have it right. He won that Northern Flat, didn't he, up at Newcastle? But he. For me, he was smashing the brakes on at every bend. He looked like a dog that wasn't happy, wasn't comfortable and didn't look right. But he certainly looked right on Sunday, didn't he? Well, the, 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 the fact that the winning time, when he won the Northern Flat, 29.01, tells you all you need to know. But as I say, that spell on the sidelines and I, I, connections, I'm glad Connections done that because it was a well-earned rest and boy, has it worked wonders. Yeah, he was awesome. Right. Three semi-finals on Sunday afternoon at Sheffield. First two we'll go through. First one is the 404. Droopy's extra good in one. The Jim Crack runner-up at 7-2. Swift Silly trapped 2 11 to 2 Bombay the Joker at 8. 8. Jukebox Popper 8-1. to one. Nick's Maverick all the way out in trap 5. Evens. Centre Hall Tedster 8-1. to one. Tricky draw, but he is explosive enough from the boxes, Tony, isn't he? Link's Maverick. Is he going to be your pick to get across? He is, but I do worry about the Swift Silly bitch. I mean, she can go 
toe to toe with any in the early pace department. Uh, Swift Silly, she's not been staying the distance uh, that great of late. But I just think Lynx Maverick, in his current mood, I think he'll turn in a prominent position. And he, he's, a, he's a stronger dog than he, than he was as well nowadays, I think. So I, I think he can overcome track five here. Yeah, same. I think the dog drawn directly inside him is the key to that race as well. Shouldn't offer too much to the turn. So ace jukebox popper might just open the door to Lynx Maverick, who can flash out anyway in his class. So good to see him back and get two votes from us. Semi-final one. Semi-final number two is the 424, getting over the 500 metres. Aiken Felix on the inside in one, five to two. Romeo Crusade, five to two. Seaview Sydney, eight to one. Romeo Cypher, three to one. Farney's Woody Fives, a middle seed. Sylvia Hill Ben, a middle seed, eight to one. Now, I looked at this race, Tony, and I just thought, ooh, I fancy a little bit of carnage here at the turn because there's a lot of early pace, particularly on the inside. I'm a big fan of Seaview Sydney, and I do feel like there's a decent dog locked away in there. He's had some horrible draws. He could bang out and get off the front and, and post a, a lively time. But there's pace in traps one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to go with five here, Farnie's Willie, who's not going to be flying into the turn. He's the Grand Prix winner over the 640 up at Sunderland. He's no stranger to success at Sheffield, whether it be over four bends or six bends. And I thought, what the price is, I'll take a chance on him off the pace. How do you see it? I'm, I'm exactly the same. I mean, it's a shame it's not first three to qualify because I'd, I'd, I'd have five as a banker to make the first three to qualify format because of the way the race is going to pan out. I mean, Sheffield yeah. is a bit of a tricky track when you're in behind. You can sit and suffer uh, because you're on the turn. But Farney's Willie runs the track really well. He stays extremely well. I think he's the key to this race. I'll, I'll, I'll be definitely backing him at around the five, six to one mark and doing him second to the field, Dave. Yeah, well, there you go. Five to one. Big price on offer. And uh, Farnie's Willie will do for us. Right. Semi-final number three is at 4.42 on Sunday afternoon. Down the card, then Aero Treat at 20s. Proper Aeris, 100 to 30. Gunslinger, 10. Wiki Ned, 4 to 5. Then two middles. Union Rebel, 100 to 30. Epic Gold at 12s. Now, I know Proper Aeris is very well regarded uh, by Team Wallace. Goes in track two. Gunslinger, they've also got in there, but... I mean, Wiki and Ed, he's drawn the right side of the early pace in, in Union Rebel. He's going to be hard to stop here, isn't he? Well, if he does what he did in the first round, it's it's, it's game over, isn't it? I mean, I thought proper Harris ran well behind the Union Rebel dog. Who I thought Union Rebel was a little bit unlucky in the um, Prodigy Stakes final yeah. at Swindon. But yeah, this is all about Wiki Ned. I think the middle draw suits him. I think if he comes away running, Dave, he's the quickest dog in the race. So it, it should be... No nonsense performance if he traps on turns. And where are you on, on a play there with him? What sort of price would you be happy to take for him to just win that race? I think he, I mean he's going to have to be start off at two on chance. I would have thought four to seven, two on. I'd have thought it'd be around that sort of mark. Well, there's four to five available then. So start pressing buttons. I'd I'd, uh, I'd advise there if you see sort of if you fancy he's going to be a as short as two on. Well, I, I mean again. If he does what he done last week, he'd represent all of that all day long. Okay, right. Well, they, they are the three semi-finals. As Tony rightly said, I mean, unfortunately, I'm not a fan of the format, but it will be only first two going through. Um, let's have a look at the outright market then. Wiki Ned, two to one. Lynx Maverick, fours. Proper Aeris, nine. Union Rebel, nine. Ten Droopies, extra good. And 11 bar. Oh, I quite like the two to one. Wiki Ned, to be honest. I mean... The one caveat that it comes with is that the seeded dogs are quite thin on the ground here. And, we, you know, it's not beyond the realms. I know we're tipping Farney's Rebel and, you know, we've given a mention to um, Farney's William. We've given a mention to Union Rebel. It could be six Raiders in the final and Wiki Ned could be all the way out in trap six. Now, it's not to say he can't get across, but, you know, you'd have to factor that into the outright market here. Yeah, and that's the reason that I'd take a chance with Farney's Willie for like the each way and, and hope that you do get like a Lynx Maverick, Swift Silly, Wiki Ned type of, of final because he could have a brilliant makeup. I know he's going to have to do things the hard way, the Farney's Willie dog, but if he was in a race where it was full of speed and railers, you'd fancy him to make the frame and you're going to nick the each way money. Yeah, well, interesting. Yeah, but I mean, like a lot of the competitions, you know, we saw New Destiny, the champion stakes, 
Um, King Memphis took a big chunk out of the art market. We'll get to both of those. But Wiki Ned here, two to one. There you go. If you want to, you know, maybe take the approach that Tony's looking at. Um, Farney's Willie might be the each way play there, the Grand Prix winner. Right. We're now going to move to Saturday night. As I mentioned, we're going to swerve the Oaks this week because it's just not enough hours in the day. And we'll pick it up next week at the semi final stage. But it is on Saturday night at Perry Bar, the Oaks. It's £20,000 to the winner. It is on the digital only fixture list. Uh, so you won't be able to watch it on the PGR stream. It will be um, on bookmakers streaming websites. It's not on the PGR stream or behind the red button on Sky Sports. But we'll pick it up next week at the semi final stage. The Kent Derby is now at the semi-final stage this week. And we're going to look back at the two quickest heat winners from last week. There's only one place to start here. We go to heat five. We go to the anti-post jolly, King Memphis, who equaled the track record 28-73. It was around about 4-1, to 7-2 to two anti-post. I thought that was huge because I think this is the fastest dog in training. He led home Cinderella Tell in track five. It was a really, really nice type for Paul Donovan. And Crossfield Enzo. In track three, what did you make of King Memphis here, Tony? Yeah, I mean, I, I think connections would be pleased the way he's returned. He's, he's, he's won all three starts over the um, course of distance. He equaled his own track record last weekend. I think he'll set a better clock than that. I think he's going to come forward a bomb for another run under his belt. He's, he's had to come from off the pace. So the fact that he's done them times tells you that he's probably going to be 28, 60, could even go 50, Mark King Memphis. I just think that he, you're right. He was he was a big price. I I, I made him around a nine to four shot to to, to win the uh, Kent Derby. I know it's, it was a decent enough competition, but as you said, King Memphis oozes class. Was it was it the strongest competition? I thought this was going to be stronger than it is. Obviously, we lost Churchfield, Sid, um, and March on Freddie's off to Ireland for a crack at the Irish Derby. And I, I just looked at this competition. I thought. You know, if King Memphis is anywhere near his best, he'd blow these away. Um, now, interestingly, you know, there's a little bit of talk, despite this dog equalizing, equaling the track record, about King Memphis is not quite up to stretch. He looks a little bit workmanlike. One, I think the, the runner-up is a fair dog, Cinderella Tell. And two, it was interesting talking to Rab McNair after the race, and, and he was absolutely delighted with what he saw. You know, not because the dog bombed to the turn and made all, because you didn't get that. He said, but go back and watch how King Memphis travelled to the drop the week before. And he said, now look at how this dog's going to the drop after this race. He's come from, and he was motoring into the drop as well. And he just said, you know, that tells me that this dog is coming to hand. Him, Queen Joni, he said, I wound them down after the derby, probably a little bit too far. And it's just taken a while for them to come back. So expect him to come on a bundle still. Around about 80% was the figure that Rab gave me. So, Jesus, he's equaling track records at 80%. There's frightening stuff to come from him. So we look forward to seeing him in action on Saturday night in his semi-final. But we'll get to that because only three spots behind him was Dave Lee's El Tornillo. And this was very impressive, Tony. 28-76, Droopy's display in track four. Atomic Crimes in track five, your other qualifiers, but all about the white jacket. And this was a dog that he came to Romford, he exploded from the boxes and put a frightening time on the ball. And I thought, well, this dog's fresh. Maybe, you know, switching him around, he might be what he's all about. But this is clearly a dog that is just at the top of his game at the moment. And he's absolutely flying. He starts and he stays. He's an aeroplane, this dog. I mean, he he, he looked a decent. He, he's always been a likeable dog. I remember when he ran at Crayford, he'd proven over the uh, 540 metres. But that run at Oxford, when he when he slammed Aero Secundi at Oxford, done 26-24. I mean, that's just freaky. Dogs don't do them times. Like, smash the clock. He's a front runner. Like, when he's off the front, that's when he's brutal. And Dave Lee has really got him ticking over well. And whatever track you take him to, he puts up a time. That's what I like, a dog like that, where it don't matter what track, he's well equipped to cope with various track draws as well, this dog. He's got it all, uh, El Tornio. And when he's off the front, he's brutal. Well, only three spots behind King Memphis there. And that was very, very impressive. Right, let's move to the semi-finals on Saturday night then. And a reminder, unfortunately... Only the first two go through here, so we could have some 
heartbreak hotel stuff going on here. There's always unlucky stories uh, in this sort of format. But the 8.36 will be the first semi-final. Droopy's Man of War goes in trap one at four to one. Uh, Romeo still 13 to two. Kilavani Sissi, a pony 25 to one. Atomic Crimes 20 to one. Cinderella Tell five to four. And the Sussex Cup champion, New in Benny for Derek Knight, seven to four. Going to be my pick off the front, but not a race um, I wanted to get too early involved in here because I've already mentioned Tony. I'm a massive fan of five. They look like they have it between them, but New in Benny's got lovely early pace and a nice draw. I just took him to get first run. How did you see it? Yeah, I was the other way. I, I, I thought Cinderella Tell, the, the local, I mean, that's two good runs behind the King Memphis and fended off Havana top note when getting on the bunny. That suggests to me he's, he's, he's strong over this distance. I'm worried about Romeo still. He's a dog that sort of moves about a bit. He's, he's the new Bocco's Alfie, I think. He sort of moves off violently sometimes from red. And probably if you draw him out, he wants to be on the rails. So you never know what you're going to get. Maybe Droopy's Man of War has a decent makeup on the rails. But with Atomic Crimes being on the immediate inside of Cinderella Tell, I think five and six can lock horns. And I just favour five to come home the stronger. Yeah, good race, great race. You mentioned Romeo still as well. I spoke to Patrick after the race and, you know, he, he said this dog's got so much pace, but he's not great at the boxes. You know, run off at the turn. He, he hadn't been to Central Park before. I think coming off the rail and with that sight of under his belt, maybe he'll corner a little bit better. He's 13 to two, you know, maybe five and six tangle early doors. Who knows? Good race that one though. And as I say, Cinderella Tell, Paul Donovan, good trainer and a little bit under the radar and off you know, eulogised about King Memphis, so I should probably be with Cinderella Tell, but I, I just felt Louis and Benny might get first round. But good race, that one, semi-final number one, that's the 8.36. We move on to the second semi-final then, the 8.54. Romeo Kingpin, 8-1. to one. King Memphis, 2-7. to seven. Droopy's Display, 10. Crossfield Enzo, 25. Tintreach, Treno, uh, unbeaten local, 3 from 3, 11-2. And King Memphis, uh, King Memphis, King Stevens at 20 to 1. Now, massive fan of King Memphis, not a fan of backing dogs at 2 to 7. I don't care how good you are, Tony. Um, I suppose we may be looking for the full cast here. What, how's the play? Yeah, I think I think two will two book these plays. I, 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 I like three for the cast, Dave. I think I know this Tint Street Treno's made a bright start to his career, but this is his toughest test to date. And if he is denied the luxury of leading, we'll learn a lot about five. But this is all about King Memphis. I expect what you said, what Rab said, the dog's going to come forward. He'll probably better his clock if he wins with a trouble-free run. And I'll look at Droopy's display. That was a good run to finish two and a half length behind El Torneo, who absolutely catapulted out the boxes. I think broke the free uh, second barrier for the split. So I'd go for three for second. OK, right. That is semi-final number two featuring the anti-post jolly King Memphis. 9-11 is semi-final number three. Havana top note, 7-4 on the inside. Then we've got Uncle Freddy. Three is unfortunately vacant. Kilo's runner is out, so three is vacant. El Tornillo, 13-8. Droopy's Donut, 7-2. Ross Pen Temple Davy at 25-1. I couldn't be against El Tornillo here, particularly with the vacant box inside. But Havana top note, you know, again, going back to the conversation I had with Rab, he just said, an absolute joy to train. He's a professional. You bring him to the track, he'll run for a brick wall for you. He starts and stays, and he's always going to run his race. And with this draw, Uncle Freddie in two, he's going to have to be a big player. Yeah, he's, he, he, he's, he's a Trojan of a dog. He's one of them. You'd love to have 10 or 20 of them in, in, in the kennel because he's proven over various distances, model of consistency, does have a good makeup, but. If El Torneo gets it right out of the boxes, I just can't see anything giving him a start and a beating, Dave, to be truthful. Yeah. So the vacant trap is obviously a help. I didn't think Kilo Drunner would be a hindrance to El Torneo anyway, but a vacant box is always helpful because it eliminates any worries out of the cans. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be two votes for El Tornillo, which translates to the screw, which uh, speaking to owner Tom Mumford is just ironic because there's nothing wrong with this dog at all. He's very straight. He's very genuine, but it does translate to the screw for whatever reason. I don't know why he decided to do that, but there you go. The dog's on fire. That's all that matters. Doesn't what he's, doesn't matter what he's called. He's on fire. Right. 
Let's go to the anti-post market then. And I just rewind to King Memphis the fact that he's two to seven to win his semi-final. He's seven to four to win the event. Eleven to two, El Tornillo. Seven to one, Havana Top Note. Ten, Cinderella Tell, New in Benny. Twelve to one, Bar. Two to seven to win. So you know, if you want to factor in a price to qualify, that's going to be very short. Call it, I don't know, one to six, one to eight, something like that. Seven or four, I think, is a fair price to win this competition. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, be with anything else other than King Memphis. I just think, as you say, Rab's timed it to perfection. He's bringing a dog forward nicely. He, he's gonna probably better the track record that he's he's, he's set in in recent weeks. El Tornillo is a very fast dog when he gets on the bunny, but I, I, I think King Memphis ain't the one dimensional dog that people think he is. He no. can come from off the speed. He's got stronger. And I, I just think he is the one to beat. Yeah, I agree. Two votes very much so for King Memphis. They're as big as seven to four to win the £20,000 Premier Greyhound Racing. Kent Derby at Central Park semi-finals on Saturday night, live on the Premier Greyhound Racing stream. Live, of course, behind the red button on Sky Sports Racing as well. I'm sure they'll try and shoehorn it in to uh, the live pitches, perhaps in between one or two horse races as well on Saturday night. Right, we now move forward again to Friday night at Romford. Two fastest heat winners from the first round of the champion stakes. Lap and a half of the track, 575 metres. And they just so happen to be the front two in the anti-post book as well. Now, we didn't have to wait long to see the anti-post, Johnny. New Destiny, she went in trap one and, you know, she won the Coronation Cup. She's the track record holder. And here, Tony, she showed exactly why. 34.75. Noir's News, who I'll put up anti-post price-wise uh, at a huge price and has really taken to Romford, uh, finished second in trap six. Roxy's Bullet, the Essex Vars winner, finished third in trap two. But poetry in motion once again. Yeah, it was always going to be a race against the clock when she's popped the lids. I mean, she, they're not commonplace, those 13, 44 splits, but that's what she has got in her locker on her day. And she got to the front, cruised into the semi finals. I mean, she ran okay in the Empress Stakes. She, she, she wasn't really at her very best in that, in, in my opinion, but she likes this easy six bends at Romford. And uh, again, I think she just cemented her position why she is anti post favourite. Yeah, and what, what is frightening, truly frightening for me, is that when you think about just Mark Wallace as a trainer, 14 times champion trainer, and Mark Wallace's dogs never do their fastest times in the first round. You know, he always he's a master trainer and brings them on throughout competitions. And you just get the feeling that New Destiny is only just kind of clicking into gear. Um, so the fact that she's put 34.75 on the board and I expect her to come forward in this event, semi-final and final, she's going to be very, very hard to beat. But the greyhound that might just serve it up to her um, is I Am's of Sydney, who went in heat three, massive, massive fan of this dog. He runs the first and second bends really, really hard, almost as hard as he runs the straights. Essex Vars runner-up, he was very unlucky behind Roxy's bullet. Uh, he was in trap one in heat three, 35.04. Droopy's maybe in trap four. Littler's nuke in three. Uh, this dog is very, very quick to the bend, and he's got huge middle as well, Tony. Yeah, he's a nice dog. As I say, dog that they can switch from four to six bends. He's, he's, he's traded blows with a cream over those both of those distances. He, he ran okay when reaching the um, Birmingham Cup final. It just had a tricky draw. was against that. him, wasn't it? Draw was against him. Yeah, but... He runs Romford really well. He's got 34.70 twice to his name over course and distance and yeah, very professional performance from Iams of Sydney. Yep, owned by the uh, Iams uh, Boys Syndicate, which is uh, a bunch of lads, plus Lorraine, Hyde Banning as well, is probably the most vocal of a lot of them. I spoke to Nigel Smith, one of the, the lads involved afterwards, obviously really, really chuffed with how the dogs run. And they're adamant, or Nigel's adamant, that this dog's going to win a Cat 1 at some point. Now, it might be this one, but you wouldn't bet against it, would you, Tony? You've just mentioned it there, you know, how classy and versatile he is. Yeah, and I mean, the, the market was lopsided in this race. I mean, New Destiny was very short, Andy Post, and at Irons of Sydney was a clear second in, and they showed why. I mean, Romford, obviously, you, you, you can make an error at Romford and come a cropper ad, would you are, but they did both show why they represented being 
that lofty position at the head of the anti post markets in the first round. Yeah, and you know, you plan them short prices. You, there's always a worry that they're going to meet at some point before the final. And mm. here we are. I'll show you in a second that they do meet. First, we'll go to semi final number one, the 819. Sid Smurf on the inside, three to one. Glide away, Hugo, 10. Droopy's Vivacity, nine to four. Golden Palace, three. Roxy's Bullet, 12. Noir's News at three to one. Now, right, a preview for this race in the Racing and Football Outlook before I'd seen the prices. And I went with Noir's News because I thought it could be a little bit of trouble on the inside here. Only seeded dog in this race. Roxy's Bullet is going to step inside. Golden Palace, I think, is going to step inside. But when I saw the prices, I thought, Golden Palace, I've done some running in defeat in the opening round. And at three to one, I'd probably take a chance because Droopy's Vivacity wouldn't be the quickest into stride. I'm going to have to stick with Noir's News because that's the dog I've put up in, in my column in the Racing and Football Outlook. But at the prices, three to one Golden Palace looks massive to me. Yeah, I mean this is a this is a five to two to field race without a shadow of a doubt. I, I favoured Noir's news just on the basis he was having a solo trial out wide. And there's not a lot of early natural speed. I, I mean, I think Noir's news could easily front off, but Golden Palace, as you touched on, ran an absolute stormer in the first round. And he's a dog that's threatening to get his head in front. I don't think the draw's as bad as it looks. I know Roxy's bullet, the Essex Vars winners in, in, in five, but not really firing on all cylinders at the moment. Sid Smurf in red's got to be a big runner. He should be getting familiar with the contours of Romford and drink his vivacity. He's a fast dog, but will he see daylight? I just think by the time they do, Noir's news might have just stolen the march. Well, as I mentioned, I put him up price-wise um, for, for this reason. You know, we speak about, you know, when you're looking at, makeups and trap draws and he post you've got to look at the number of seeded dogs as well and what drew me to what noir's news is that the wides were going to be thin on the ground come the business end of this competition so if he can qualify you know he's probably going to be again on the outside of five raiders so he's still a big price now anti post I mean, myself and tony give him a big shout out i i think it's between golden palace and and Noir's news. That is the first semi-final of the 819. Semi-final number two. Strap yourselves in because this one's going to be a hell of a race. It's the 836. Never say no. Nine to one. It was a class act. Nine to one. Uh, Irons of Sydney, seven to four. New Destiny, four to six. Lickers Nuke, 16s. Elite Albert, 25. Banimac, John Joe. Again, the only wide in here at 16 to one. Right. It's two versus three according to the market. And how do you see it? I'm with New Destiny. Like to, it's, it's a watching race for me because I mean, as you say, never say no. He's no back number, and the thing is, he's a 37 and a bit kilo dog. So if he did hold his position on the inside, now New Destiny, she's going to have to track really cleverly because I am Sydney's 36 and a bit kilo, so she's going to sort of have to look after herself. But one thing that she can do is get into a rhythm. So I'm not sure. I don't know if I want that electric break again. I mean, it probably sounds crazy to say you don't, but maybe if she did miss it, it might play to her strengths as well. But I do think that she's going to pass this test. But as a betting race, no, nah, four to six, I couldn't be a player, Dave. Yeah, it's it's a fascinating race. You know, there be there will be takers for Iams of Sydney here to just go bingo, get first mm -hmm. run, put a 34-80, 34-70 on the board and... It will be, you know, catch me if you can. And New Destiny, the reason why she has to be as short as she is, because if if he does go bingo and she goes around in second, although he's not vulnerable late, she's a monster, isn't she? You know, if she went round on the shoulder or just in the slipstream of him, I'd still fancy her getting him coming home. Yeah, she, she, that's what I do like about New Destiny. Once she gets into a, a, a rhythm, I think over four bends, you see she has a little bit of a flat spot against those true four bend dogs. But over these distances, she doesn't lose her position. And she's relentless. She's a relentless galloper, Dave. Yeah, that vulnerability, I think we saw that in the... It was the Sussex Cup, wasn't it, that she ran in down at Hove? And she just mm. sort of got going a little bit too late. But she's on fire at the moment. That's a hell of a race. Right, let's move on to semi-final number three. 8.54. Droopy's maybe on the inside, 12-1. to 1. Drive on lad, 8. Gary the Arb, 2. Now it's my turn, 7. Fabulous Sneak, 6-5. And Swift Depot at seven to one. I thought Fabulous Sneak looked really short here 
at six to five. Gary the Arb impressed me. I put him up on this show last week at 50 to one. Um, and I, I think he can go from the front again here. Yeah, I, I, I think the same. I think um, he can hold his position in, in, in the middle. Um, good run in the first round, beating drive on, uh, drive on lad. Fabulous Sonique's running out of her skin, in particularly over course and distance, but she's drawn wider than I bill, and now it's my turn. Could be a bit of a goalkeeper around the opening bend. Swift Depot, he sort of escaped the pack when winning his heat. Um, he, he's running well. He, he, he nearly um, reached the final of the Stayers Classic at, at, at Monmouth, contested the, the Yarmouth Derby. For, so he's running at the top of his game. But I think Gary Yarl is a dog that's got a bit of all-round pace, Dave. Yeah, the more I see of him, I think the stronger he looks. So, you know, he starts and he stays. Um, and at those prices, I, I'd certainly have Gary the Arb and Fabulous and Nick closer together than two to one and, and six to five, respectively. So he will do for me the Hove Raider. Let's have a look at the outright market then. Six to four, New Destiny. I'm to Sydney, seven to two, 11 to two, Fabulous and Nick. 12 to one, Gary the Arb. 20 bar. Um, you know, we put up Droopy's Vivacity at 40s, Gary the Arb at 50s. I still feel like there's a little bit of each way action here. I know they're facing off against each other, but I, I like the look of Golden Palace at 20 to 1 and, and Noir News is still 33 to 1. Did you have any sort of strong view here, Tony? No, I was going to say, I mean, I put New Destiny up at the start. I'd just stick with, with, with what I've put up, really. Um, I think it's a banana skin that semi final. You, you, you'd, to be true, you'd take second spot now. Like if he was New Destiny, you, you just want to be in the final. Um, but yeah, I do think she's the one to beat, but nothing's ever straightforward at Romans. No, miss breaks and you can be on your way home out and out of the competition. You know, the draw next week, um, whoever gets through is going to be fascinating as well. It could be six railers. You know, we, we've had that in the past. I think the Essex Vars was six railers, if I remember rightly at the start of the year. So it will be interesting. Uh, and good luck to everyone involved there. A reminder that all the action is live on the Premier Greyhound Racing Service on the stream or behind the red button on Sky Sports Racing. Right, it is now that time once again. Tony Bullen of the Racing Post joins us here on Off The Leash and it's time for the best bet of the week. Now there's Category 1 action almost every night this weekend. Tony, where are you off to? Yeah, well, I was tempted to go Farnies Willie at Sheffield, but I'm going to go Romford. We do sort of tend to blow up and cold at Romford, but they've got that coral silver standard competition running alongside the champion stakes. And there's a real fascinating clash. Millbank Boilers in track one in the third semi, taking on this Brindle bully of Dave Mullins, who's absolutely destroyed the opposition. The pennies really dropped with Brindle bully, but Millbank Boiler put up a nice time when winning his heat in good fashion. I think he relished the drop back to an easy four bends. And I, I, I thought at the potential prices, Milkbank Boiler around two to one, nine to four to upstage this Brindle Bully in the third semi-final, the Silver Standard at Bromford. A little bit of juice in Milbank Boiler then. Um, I don't think there's going to be much juice in my selection and it's no good for the shelf life of this show, but I'm going early doors. I'm going Thursday night at Hove. Uh, I'm going with Ginger's print in the 8.59 on Thursday night. Steps up to a stiffer four bends. Great draw on the inside. Um, Belinda Green, Alan Lucas, really, really nice type. Uh, not Belinda Green, Pat Brown, apologies. Um, and Alan Lucas, top owner, nice bloke. And he's really enjoying the journey so far with Ginger's print. And finished third in the Puppy Cup at a track that I don't think suited Ginger's print. So I think a stiff, true four bends will. And he's got a nice draw. And I think, you know, anything above evens, sign me up. That will do for me. So Ginger's Prince is going to be my best bet of the week. Um, how are you going to consume all this racing, Tony, this week? It's crazy. Yes. I mean, as I say, trainers have had to pick their poison, what events they're going to go with, with their pride and joys. But the cream are rising to the top and it's, it's, it's going to be more frills and spills for sure. But hopefully... We just want to see clean run races and good performances. Yeah, we're looking forward to all of it. Once again, we thank Tony for his time and expertise. Do remember to drop a like, comment and subscribe. We did have uh, one or two messages in. Tony Hawes as well, giving his selections. Pop them in the YouTube 
um, comments below and we'll read them out on the show next week. Let us know who you fancy. Remember to gamble responsibly. Enjoy the racing. There is Category 1 action everywhere you look this week. And we'll see you next time.